Okay guys, Vimtech here in game of Dying Light guys and as you guys know Dying Light is one of the most scariest horrific zombie games uh, ever created guys for different platforms and uh, what's good about this is that you can actually share the experience and the horror of this game with your colleagues when you are playing a multiplayer or co-op online now guys as I said before um, I love playing solo games but since I have played co-op games it's kind of becoming more fun and um, it's just that the experience when you're playing solo is not that exciting anymore because you don't actually uh, share that experiences with your colleagues now guys, Dying Light has a variety of gameplay. Uh, I'll just give you a bit of background is that this game came out I think around in 2015 and uh, till today it is rated as one of the best horror games uh, you can play and as you can see we are actually mutilating uh, one of the zombies over here and uh, the great thing about this game is that it's not an easy game guys it is a very very hard game we are playing the game on an advanced level which is uh, um, the difficulty is uh, set pretty high um, and the funny thing is that I think you you tend to prolong uh, the, the playability of this game when you're playing it on a harder setting it's not easy uh, it becomes more challenge and I think if you are not a novice player if you are a bit of an intermediate player uh, it is good to set the game settings on advanced but guys from a game perspective um, a game that was created in 2015 uh, very atmospheric very horrific very brutal very bloody uh, not recommended for younger players uh, more mature players but um, if you are into the horror genre, you are going to love this game. Uh, myself, Nismo Nish, Clayton Shawnee 3 to 5, we love the zombie genre um, of the games. As you can see, we are left for their fans, um, World War Z especially. And uh, guys, this game is just brutal. Um, and the beauty part about this game is that uh, the, the variety of gameplay and also is that your weapons in hand do not last all the time they actually take damage when you're fighting an enemy so guys we are opening up some sort of chests and in the chests you find valuables like weapons or trading items and the trading items can be used uh, at the trader in order to trade for more upgraded sort of weapons like bats axes etc and uh, which is just more effective against the enemy but guys it is a very dark game and the annoying thing about it is that you have to have your flashlight on and then your battery turn, turns to run out and then your flashlight goes off and then you are a bit in trouble so your battery has to recharge again but guys as you can see we are just scouting the area we are start scouting rooms for resources uh, Here's a handgun. This was the first handgun uh, I've actually encountered in the game uh, since we've been playing it because everything has just been killing enemies via bats, axes, spanners, shifting spanners. Now guys, here's my inventory. You can see all the types of weapons that I collected and as you can see, there's no actual firearm in here. They're just gas pipes, um, a knife, pipe wrench, etc. So this is my first handgun. I'm pretty... Uh, uh, happy um, I do actually have a handgun so I'm sure the handguns are more effective against the zombies but uh, the down factor of it is that the louder the sound the more uh, you attract the zombies in hordes so uh, it becomes very very brutal uh, in the game guys um, now you are going to encounter all these scenarios of your backpack and then your equipment that you carry so guys you'll have to play around on how to equip your weapons uh, in the beginning I was a bit confused uh, because just the intensity you are playing with your co-op players this 
Uh, you have to get prepared for the battles. Uh, you have to make sure you are stocked up on ammo and your resources, especially on crafting materials, guys. Very, very important is that the crafting materials actually help you to fix up weapons. So, guys, you need to collect crafting items as well. And um, yes, guys, you as you will see later on in the game, uh, it gets brutally uh, hard and intense. But as I said before, we are playing this game on advanced level. You can play this game on an easier level uh, for novice players, but to get the maximum excitement and enjoyment in the horror, play it on an advanced level. Now guys, as you could see, all my weapons there have been damaged. They have exclamation marks. I want to equip the handgun. Uh, I think Shawnee 3 to 5 just gave me a bit of uh, some side notes or step notes here on how to just equip the weapon. Um, because I am not familiar or accustomed with Dying Light. Um, my fellow three colleagues have played this game before. This was my first experience. And it is a pretty horrific experience because um, it is an unpleasant experience. Let's put it that way. The horror is just intense. It's brutal. And especially when you lose a life and you die, it's not a pleasant feeling. And uh, this game is just dark. It's just nasty. So... Let's go and experience it guys. So I just want to experience some environment physics over here about how the game plays uh, and how the GTX 1650 was actually handling the game. Um, all I can say is that this card has blown me away for a budget card and um, I have downloaded the new uh, Nvidia updated drivers. Uh, and uh, guys the physics in the game are pretty good. Uh, the environment what the game provides, yes. There is uh, blast areas, like as you can see, one of my colleagues are throwing a flammable canisters, um, which do a lot of damage to the enemy, but as well as to the players themselves. So be careful when you're actually shooting those things. Now guys, the AI in this game is pretty, uh, are pretty good, they're pretty clever. Uh, they can actually parry, dodge bullets, etc. So... And AI is very, very tough in this game. You are not just going to go into a horde of zombies and just going to kill them. Believe me, they will brutalize you. So you need to run. Most of the time in Dying Light, you are either running or you are scavenging for resources. Or you're trying to reach your goal point. Or trying to save somebody, etc. So you have to work as a team. Uh, we tend to stray uh, a bit at times. Um, some guys are more uh, in tune for the objective. I'm a guy that likes to explore. So sometimes I get left behind and I'm left alone. And then I get myself into a load of trouble. Uh, because the zombies tend to hoard. Now I'm an explorer. I like scavenging the areas. Uh, whereas a player like Shawnee 3 to 5 likes to go forward into the game. Uh, myself and Nismo Nish explore the environments. I think we uh, we are all the players. We just tend to appreciate uh, what the environment uh, does for us and what it can provide for us. But you have to be on your toes in this game, guys. Um, it is not easy. Ammo resources, not easy to find. Make sure you use them sparingly. Uh... And just make sure you got crafted resources uh, that are pretty, uh, uh, they come in pretty handy at times, guys. So you, as you can see, there's some ammo over here. Let's just grab them. There we go. Grabbing the ammo. Yes, some cash. The cash will help us later. And uh, yeah, the bodies look pretty brutal, guys. Lots of blood. Lots of gore. Uh, as I said, not intent for younger viewers. Now guys, the, the environments are pretty dark. Uh, as I said, you have a flashlight. And guys, believe me, when night comes in dying light, it's not a pleasant experience. It becomes very, very hard. The zombies get very, extremely brutal. Uh, so please don't leave your team in the night guys word of advice 
and uh, as you can see here we are trying to save this gentleman now guys just to give you a short story this gentleman is a doctor he actually developed some sort of uh, if I'm not mistaken an antidote for uh, for the virus uh, and the antagonist or our enemy at hand uh, as you'll see later um, captures this doctor but we tend to save him and we get ourselves into a bit of trouble and um, besides zombies yes there is human factor as well and um, as you will see we will encounter our human enemies and there's our protagonist at hand uh, the beauty part about this game is that character development is um, they in tune very very well um, each character has uh, their own uniqueness and which adds to the story like the enemy over here he's very brutal um, he's some sort of like a like a like a warlord in in, in the zombie apocalyptic, apocalyptic world and uh, we've been encountering our enemy now since the beginning of the game and as you can see we've got our lights just knocked out and now we are in his headquarters now guys now dying light provides different game scenarios as you will see i will explain it through in the scene guys the cutscenes are very very important so please uh if you are going to play this game um listen to what they say um since this is just a, a video on presenting uh, what dying light consists of uh, you can't actually hear uh, in game um, I'm just doing more uh, as a is just as a as a display on what dying light is the beautiful environments and just giving you guys a bit of the breakdown I don't like spoiling um, the experience you need to experience this with your mates uh, but guys as I can tell you this enemy is very brutal he as you can see he actually um, kills his own men um, no remorse he has thrown us into some sort of an arena and uh, this is going to be very very intense now all right guys and here we are set up for our next scene guys the shadow quality in this game is absolutely crazy um, for 2015 game the environments are absolutely fantastic the beauty part is that it actually runs very very smooth now guys here um, we are thrown into some sort of an arena our weapons have been taken away from us as you can see on my bottom right hand corner we are only left with our fists now fists are not really effective against zombies you will have to find a melee weapon now guys before you do that scout your area because if the zombies tend to pack on you you are going to be brutalized so find an area where you can just get your head in your footing I found the gas pipe let's just equip it at least I have some sort of weapon in hand there is another crumble robot there uh, a gas tank where we can cause an explosion one of my colleagues have just jumped up one of my colleagues have just taken the gas tank throwing it down and let's see what my colleagues take okay so one of my colleagues have taken the concrete uh crumble bar i think let me equip that as well and guys look at the effects of the flies on the dead corpses pretty amazing eh brutal guys we have firecrackers as well firecrackers are pretty good it distracts the enemy uh into one area so practically um, your colleagues can can run away or in case if you need to make a pass or run to a certain section the firecrackers just draw the zombies in into one area now guys I'm just giving you guys a view on how these environments look uh, it is amazing and as you can see from the top you scout the area the the effects are just simply fantastic for a 2015 game and guys dying light 2 will be out soon um, 
and um, I'm sure it's going to be mesmerizing as well uh, but geez I'm just so amazed at Dying Light 1 and I mean as a horror fan of um, of the genre of type of game um, I'm pretty amazed at this game but the experience lies when you play with your colleagues uh, I think I'll be afraid to play this game uh, on a solo campaign uh, I think the horror experience is just more ex more exciting than when you're experiencing it with with your colleagues and uh, as you can see uh, one of my colleagues has just wandered around unguarded ace Clayton um, I'm just showing you guys how these environments look now guys notice something in these environments there are certain spikes or or areas in the environment now these environments are can adapt to your gameplay or can help you against the enemy and as you will see in the scene we are going to be surprised by one of the boss fights in Dying Light this is just to give you a taste on the enemy gameplay and as you can see guys he's one big gigantic mutated zombie and before going into battle scout your area scout where your enemy is one of my colleagues are down uh, guys the, the bosses are brutal in this game um, I think one swab at you and you practically you'll, you'll die so it's not easy guys not easy and as I will show you now you can distract the enemy as well and there we go one of my colleagues just got swab um, so guys you have to You have to distract melee, distract melee. And there we go. I tried my attempt, I ran into him, and then I've just got smacked. Okay, he's got some sort of armor. This is just to give you guys a view shot of the battlefield. And guys, this is what Dying Light is about. What I love about these enemies is that the AI is that they can actually throw projectiles at you. Concrete slabs, uh, rocks, um, which does not make it easy for the player as well. Boulders. Now guys, remember, certain weapons are faster to melee certain weapons are slower to melee uh, I think it actually gives you the waiting physiques um, of each um, weapon that you have equipped and um, as you can see that's the way we are attacking the enemy uh, the enemy's power meter has gone a bit down I'm not going to engage too much in this. I just wanted to do an overall shot of how the game pans out. Wow, beautiful effects, guys. Intense. I really love the environments, guys. The colors, the smoke. Um, it just gives you that horrific that horrific environment guys it's a very unpleasant experience now in dying light as well when you go down they do give you uh, a number of seconds in order to get revived by a teammate um, if you are not revived on time you will lose some points you'll die but you will respawn in the area again and um, the respawning system is pretty good it respawns you back into your area but guys it's not easy because the enemies you take 
one or two shots of damage and practically you are dead so you have to work as a team I like jumping on these concrete slabs, it gives you a better view of the enemy. And these enemies are pretty strong. Now I think the enemy now has been distracted. And I think he has seen me. There we go. One of my colleagues have got him. I'm just running away from him. Not easy, guys. Not easy. Pretty, pretty good. Wow, beautiful environment. I did not expect Iron Life to be as good as this. For a horror game, it's absolutely fantastic. And I don't think so, you actually need a high end GPU in order to run this game. So even guys with the 1000 NVIDIA series of cards, you guys can experience this I think to the max. Wow, look at that. The enemy is brutally mutilated by our shots. Our enemies are looking down below. It's some sort of an arena just like in gladiators but with zombies now guys the zombies are not easy to kill as well I just hit this zombie he goes down he comes back up again it's called the demolisher where is he? where is he? okay demolishes the main guy wow there we go and there's our Zombie pal again, strong enemies. Guys, we have these effects um, from the antidote we've taken. So it actually slows you down while you're actually doing battle. Not nice. Some cash. Very, very important to collect resources. It does help you to upgrade weapons. But guys, beautiful environments. This game, it has a lot of atmosphere. A lot of atmosphere. Alright, let's go to a cutscene. Our enemy does not look too pleased. And let's watch what happens next. And here comes trouble, guys. We ain't happy. Oh, as usual, we lose our weapons. Let's watch what happens in this next cutscene. Here we go with our action scene guys. The characters are done phenomenally well. You 
gives the order for, for his soldiers to kill us and we actually grab the knife oh my god that is brutal You can see the doctor has been injured but it does not look like he's gonna make it okay our enemy tends to be very angry now he's lost his hand but guys overall if you like zombie games dying light is the game you really need to play with colleagues guys it is a must play right guys another thing is that dying light also has these challenges where you have to escape certain areas um, you have to be pretty quick um, in these sections um, otherwise you will die uh, we have bullets firing at us now guys the only thing what I disliked about dying light is that um, the jumping and um, the way you climb onto these uh, platforms now it is a bit tough with keyboard and mouse if you play you can get excited make the wrong jump fall and kill yourself uh, is what I'm doing now and um, you need to actually know where you're going now guys if you are left alone in a certain area it does become very very tough because the enemies tend to uh, gang down on you uh, I see my colleagues are down there as well. Uh, let's just go up. Let's give this another shot. Let's go up there. I see one of my colleagues up there. Now guys, I missed the first jump. The jump is to the right, not straight ahead. Oh, and I just got shot, guys. So you have to be careful of, of uh, uh, environmental fire. Um, you do get hit, as I said. Uh, there's no remorse. You will go down. The game setting is on high. Let's just give this another shot. You, we are respawned in the same area. Um, I think it is much better to play with a, a Xbox controller or a, a compatible PC gaming controller. Um, keyboard and mouse can get a bit tired, frustrating at times. Okay, let's run. Now guys, you're going to experience this gameplay a lot. Running on thin platforms. And you actually have to reach your goal where the orange dot is on your map. On your top right hand corner. Now guys, I got shot again, um, and as I said, you will die quickly. So let's give this another shot, another crack. It's not easy. You can teleport and travel um, instead of doing all this all over again, but just for video and illustrative purposes, I will do it again. Uh, you do have a button called B called fast travel where you can just meet up with your teammates uh, If you are left very far behind so which is a good mechanic in the game guys But what it does is that it actually spoils the gaming experience because you're not uh, actually um, Looking at the areas now myself and Nismo Nish uh, We tend to lag behind a lot in this game since we like to explore um the environments I think we kind of old school where we just appreciate what the designers of the game have actually done so myself and Nismo like to scavenge around certain areas whereas Nismo and um, Clayton tend to reach want to reach object objectives pretty quickly so I think there's different uh, styles of gameplay guys um, for like myself and Nismo Nish if we have to play this by ourselves uh, we will be doing a lot of exploring on the environments and I think with Clayton and Shawnee 325 they just want to reach objectives now guys 
you will encounter certain areas like this where you will find there are these lifts to go down but the lifts are not actually there so there are other ways on how to escape the area but guys if you do a false jump or if you jump incorrectly you are going to die so there are these platforms and as i said the jumping is not the easiest uh to do in this game if you are playing with keyboard and mouse uh, and we just jumped into water now guys you have to look where the exits are this game is very very dark as you can see it gets dead frustrating uh, because you won't know where you are and i think we are coming out into some sort of a of a basement that's flooded with water dark environments again guys you see the flashlight goes off not easy guys not easy and it's not like when you left alone myself and unguarded ace together okay we've come to a dead end checking around it's just not fun to be alone guys True horror factor, true horror factor, very dark rooms. And we're going deeper and deeper into the unknown. Okay, this place looks like it's a dead end. It's actually called the pit. Let's go up. And here we are guys. Alright guys, so I hope you guys did like the video. Thanks for watching. I will be doing another game review soon. This is Dying Light. Vimstack and the Vimstack channel out. Thank you.